So last week we were talking about law of conservation of mechanical energy. And we said that in all situations, energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. Okay? It can be turned into other forms, it can be transferred away by work, okay? or given to a system because of work, um, but it can't be created and it can't be destroyed. In a perfect physical world, mechanical energy converts 100% efficiently into mechanical energy. Okay? Sort of obvious, but okay. What we mean by that is potential energy and kinetic energy can constantly be turned into one another okay, in a 100% efficient imaginary system. And because obviously there's no um, system that would actually do that in real life. A very simple example is like the one we went over on the board there with the roller coaster, or another one is a simple pendulum. Okay, so right now, if I'm holding this and it can't fall any further, does it have any mechanical energy? No. Okay, it's not moving, and it's it can't fall any further because it's attached to me. Okay, so it's not going to fall. How about now? Yes. Why? Exactly. I put work into the system. Okay? I exerted a force through a distance that drew this thing away from its lowest point. So now it has mechanical energy in the form of potential. gravitational potential energy. What will happen if I let it go? Right, it'll fall. Okay? And it'll just start swinging back and forth. And it'll convert that work that I put into the system, that potential energy, into kinetic and then back into potential and then back into kinetic. Okay, so where does it have the most potential energy? Yeah, at the top, exactly, okay, at the top. Now, it has the most potential energy there because that's where it's also moving the slowest. In fact, for an instant at both sides, it is stopped, and all of its energy is potential. Okay, where does it have the most kinetic energy? in the center, right? Because that's where it's had all the time to accelerate and turn that potential energy into kinetic energy. So for an instant here, it has no potential energy because it's at its lowest point and its highest speed, right? So it's just like a roller coaster going up and down hills, okay? a pendulum works exactly the same way. Okay? And anything that's converting gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy does it. Okay. So if we're looking at some of these questions here, okay, um, this picture here with the football in question number two. So I have a kicker on a football team, kicks the football that travels in the trajectory shown in the diagram. So right here, the instant the ball leaves the kicker's foot, what kind of energy does it have? Just after it leaves its foot. Kinetic. Kinetic. Right, because we would assume it's kind of still on the ground, right? It's just leaving its foot, right? Um, it's already changed shape back into a football as opposed to having the dent in it from his foot, okay? Because you do impart a bit of elastic potential energy into a football when you kick it because you push it in and it wants to bounce back, right? But we're going to imagine that it's just left his foot, it's original shape, it's all kinetic at that point, all right? Uh, what about right here? What kind of energy would it have there? Yeah, both. Off it's off the ground and it's moving, right? What about right here? And it's still moving, okay? Had he thrown it or kicked it somehow straight up in the air, then at its highest point, yes, it would only have potential. But because it's following this trajectory, at this point, it is still moving horizontally. So it still has some mechanical kinetic energy at that point. Okay, does everyone follow me there? That's kind of a trick. I kind of set you up on that one. Okay, because our natural instinct, because of everything we've talked about, is that its highest point doesn't have any kinetic. Except in this case, it's two-dimensional, right? It's moving vertically and horizontally at the same time. Okay. Um, right, that pretty much answers all of those. So where is the total mechanical energy of that football the greatest? Right. 
There's no graded. It's the same everywhere. Right? Wasn't all the stuff we were just talking about because of this? The mechanical energy of the football doesn't change at any point. It has the same amount of mechanical energy everywhere. How much of it is kinetic and how much of it is potential certainly changes. But the amount of mechanical it has is always the same. Okay. Those are some of those kind of tricky questions that can come up in a multiple choice item on a unit exam, say on Thursday. Okay. Those are the ones that check your understanding of a concept. All right. Let's look at something that's both energy as well as graphing. So if I'm looking at this graph right here, it shows potential energy as a function of height. What is very, very wrong with this graph? It should. Wouldn't it, like it shape? Yeah, I would say its shape is wrong because there's something else wrong with it. What's not on either axis? The height's on the X. Well, the height's on the X, that's fine, but there's no numbers there. There's no scale. So what do you and I naturally assume the scale does? Goes up. Well, then this graph makes no sense. Because it's saying that as height increases, potential energy increases, and then for some reason, as height increases, potential energy decreases. don't think so. Okay? That doesn't make any sense to me, right? Unless this is 0 and this is 0 and this is our maximum. Then that graph makes sense. Okay? The reason that graph doesn't make sense is because it isn't built right. You have to have a scale on a graph. Otherwise, it can be misinterpreted, just like we misinterpreted that graph. Okay? Easy to misinterpret a graph when you don't build it right. Okay? Same problem with this one. Yeah, same problem. Okay? It's saying that as height increases, kinetic energy decreases, which is true. But then at some magical height, that stops being the case in kinetic energy. The thing just starts to speed up while going upwards. Okay? Because we assume that this is an increasing scale instead of, same as the other one, okay? our max height is in the middle. Would it be a zero on the y-axis as well? Yes. Yeah, because here is where, at the maximum height, is where this thing is turning around and coming back down, right? And so its speed is zero, and its kinetic energy would thus be zero oh, at the okay. maximum height. Okay? All right. Put that one already. Okay, I want you guys to copy this one down and give it a try. This is as, this is as tough as essentially they get, okay? But it's pattern. It's just like the one we did from the quiz. Right, so it's nothing you can't handle. Okay, I want you to copy it down, including my awesome diagram with the toboggan and the setter. I see this because it was like my best friend. Give it a try. See if you can solve it. I did put the mass on here. Do you need it? No, but people complain, so I put it on. All right. So on this one here, okay, obviously there's no mention of forces, so we know it's a law of conservation of energy question. Okay? Uh, and usually if you have something that's just going downhill or falling just because of gravity, it's a conservation of energy question because there's no additional thing pushing it or pulling it other than gravity. Okay? Um, so our first thing is obviously we want to write down okay, that this is a conservation of energy question. EI equals EF. Okay? And the next thing we want to do is when we're about to expand this out, we know that initially, okay, the initial energy is EP initial plus EK initial equals EP final plus EK final. Once I've written that out, I want to check and make sure I actually have all four of those. Because there are some situations where I may not. Okay? We have the, the situations where you drop a rock off a cliff and you're talking about when it hits the bottom. Well, then I don't have any initial kinetic and I don't have any final potential okay, in that situation. I could also have this be, uh, you know, something is thrown downwards. So it would have both. Okay? And then we're talking about the bottom where it would only have kinetic. So what I need to do is look at the context of the question and decide, do I have initial potential energy? 
I'm starting at the top of the hill, yes. Okay. Do I have initial kinetic? I'm moving at 1.5 at the top of the hill, yes. Okay. At the end, looking for a final height. If they're asking me for the final height, I have to assume it's not zero. So yes, I have final potential energy. Okay. And if I don't, I'll find out because it'll work out to zero when I do the calculations. Okay. And then my final, do I have final kinetic? Yes. It says here I'm moving at seven and a half meters per second at that position. Okay. Everybody with me there? All right, so I do have all four of the types of energy. So now I need to um, look at what do I need to solve for? What is it part of? So I'm solving for final height. Which term is that part of? It's EPF, it's part of my final potential energy. So what I want to do is isolate that before I expand to the big formulas. Okay. So to get EPF by itself, what do I do with EKF? I subtract it over to the other side. All right, so I'm going to have EP initial plus EK initial, or my mechanical energy, minus my final kinetic energy equals my final potential energy. Okay, now I can expand this out even further. Now I can say, all right, M times G times H initial plus one half MV initial squared minus one half mvf squared equals m times g times h final. All right, what's in every term? Mass. If you're not comfortable canceling it, that's fine. They did give it to you here. And on a test, I would give it to you. All right, I'm not going to play that joke again because it was only kind of slightly funny. Okay. Uh, so I cancel all the m's. I need to get hf by itself. What do I have to move? How do I move it? All right, there's my formula, solving for HF. So we're going to have 9.81 times the initial height, which was 30 meters, right? Okay. Um, times, oops, sorry, not times, plus um, one half times 1.5. Squared minus one half times seven point five squared divided by one half equals my final height. Probably not going to be much of a change here. If it's gravity, what would it be in terms of equal? Oh, sorry. Yes, absolutely. This should be nine point eight one. Okay. Used to solving for b. Okay, divided by nine point eight one. Absolutely, you're right. All right, so we've got 9.81 times 30 plus 0.5 times 1.5 squared minus 0.5 times 7.5 squared divided by 9.81. All right, so this person only came down 2.76 meters. Okay, we're, we're looking at 27.2 meters still above the bottom. We started at 30, okay? So they've only gone three meters down. Which is why they're also not moving very fast yet. They're only moving at seven and a half meters per second. Okay. All right, how are we feeling about that one? Okay, does that still follow the same patterns? Yeah, that time I solved for H instead of V, even though I tried desperately to solve for V. Okay. All we had to do is manipulate slightly differently, but they all work exactly the same. And so if you can, again, learn that pattern, just like you did with work energy theorem, the only challenge is identifying when it's a work energy theorem versus a conservation of energy question. How many of these questions are going to be on the final? Oh, on the final? One. Oh, on this unit exam? One. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions, Alan? And like, what would a question like that one usually be out of? Six. Six? Six to eight, depending on what I'm feeling. Um, like, sometimes I give marks for, like, everything. So I would give a mark for givens. If I was being like super generous, mark for givens, mark for this step, mark for this step, mark for that step, mark for that step, mark for plugging in the numbers, mark for the answer. What is that, eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, that's seven. So between six and eight. Okay. Yeah. Like no, you can just write it out. Yeah, that's fine. Whichever way, as long as they're as long as they're there, right? Yeah. For me, it kind of 
I, I, it's better if I visualize it, but not everybody's that way, so that's fine. If you just write down the numbers, totally cool with that. Okay, um, how important is it to show your work on a question like this? Very. Very, okay, because it is, it is pretty easy to mess it up in the calculator. Okay? And then if all you wrote is the answer, you get one out of eight, even though you knew how to do it. Okay? You just can't punch numbers into your calculator. That's not something to lose six or seven marks over. Okay? Show me that I understand how this question works. Here's all my work. I, I'm just really bad at typing. Okay? Better to lose one mark for that. All right, we already talked about those. And... Okay, I want you to try this one. It's like the one that was on the quiz. So, 1600 kilogram roller coaster. Five meters per second here, 50 meters above the ground. How fast is it going over there when it's only eight meters above the ground? So you don't have to write out your givens. Here they are, unless you want to write them differently. So, once again, no mention of any forces, okay, or any changing energy. So we know that this is a situation where our initial mechanical energy equals our final mechanical energy. Okay? Do I have kinetic energy at the beginning? Yep, because I'm moving at 5 meters per second. So I can say EK initial. Do I have potential energy at the beginning? Definitely, 50 meters above the ground. All right, do I have both at the end? Yep. Okay, still eight meters off the ground, and they're asking me to calculate speed. I'm lower than I am here, so I definitely would have kinetic energy. All right, so I have both there. All right, what I'm looking for is final speed, which is part of which term? It's part of this term. So I need to get this term by itself before I put in all the formulas. So how do I move the potential final? Subtract it. Right. So I'm going to subtract EPF over to this side. So I'll have EK initial plus EP initial minus EP final equals EK final. So in other words, my mechanical energy minus my potential equals my kinetic. Now I can plug in all of my formulas. So that will be uh, 1 half MV initial squared plus M times G times H initial minus M times G times H final equals one half M V final squared. Okay, I was given the mass. I can put it in for M if I want. I don't want. I want to simplify what I'm doing, so I'm going to cancel the M's off. If you're not comfortable with that, that's fine. Okay. Um, I need to solve for VF. So now that all the M's are gone, what do I have to do with the half? Divide it over to the other side, and then instead of VF squared, I want VF, so I would? Square. Right, so I end up with this. Um, that VF will equal the square root of, okay, one half VF, sorry, not VF, VI, squared uh, plus G times HI, minus G times HF, divided by 1 half, because okay, that's all the M's out of there. So 1 half times 5 squared plus 9.81 times 50 minus 9.81 times 8, divided by 1 half. And then I'll square root. So 0.5 times 25, that's 5 squared. Uh, plus 9.81 times 50 minus 9.81 times 8 divided by 1 half square rooted. All right, it's moving at 29 meters per second. That's pretty fast. It's 105 kilometers an hour. Okay, so 29 meters per second would be my final end. Okay. Everybody all right with how that one works? Okay. Let's have a look at your work ladder. So if you can call those up on your phones right now.
Okay, we'll kind of finish off with this one. I don't know if we'll actually get it done, but we'll get going on it at least. All right, and then tomorrow, we're going to do a little bit more conservation of energy. I'm going to talk about efficiency tomorrow. That's it. Thursday's your test. All right, let's just quickly look at the setup of this, and then we'll finish it off tomorrow. All right, so we got a hill. We got a toboggan, okay, in two different places. One point, it's 30 meters above the bottom, and it's moving at 14 meters per second. Okay, shortly thereafter, it's moving at 23 meters per second. We are looking for the height at that point. Okay, that is the setup for that question. Right, so that's what we'll be looking at starting tomorrow. Okay, so only thing you guys have left before Christmas, obviously, is your unit exam. Okay, the um, energy lab we did on Monday isn't due until the Tuesday we get back. Okay, so um, it's not due right away, but you know, make sure it gets done. Right? If you want me to look over it any time this week or Monday after Christmas. Okay.